a station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Wednesday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. Right now, a Montgomery County Police Sergeant is paralyzed after he was hit by a driver going more than 100 miles an hour down I-270 this morning. That sergeant recovering at a nearby hospital tonight. And Montgomery County has confirmed that the officer is Sergeant Patrick Kipp of the, on, of the left on this picture here. And he kept actually received an award for drunk driving prevention twice, most recently in 2021. The driver who hit him this morning, no stranger to officers and facing serious charges. Our Randy Bass is live along 270 in Gaithersburg where it happened. Randy, what are you learning from the latest press conference moments ago? Yeah, Mark and Elisa, the most devastating of those details we've learned this afternoon. Sergeant Patrick Kep of the Montgomery County Police Department, you losing the use of both of his legs in this crash. Montgomery County Police also telling us they believe this crash was absolutely intentional. They say that 19 year old driver was going 100 to 110 miles an hour up I-270 northbound this morning when that driver swerved toward the median intentionally hitting that police sergeant and the story really doesn't stop there in order to get the full picture of what really happened this morning. The driver identified now as 19 year old Frederick Rafael Mayorga from Frederick, Maryland. Both Mayorga and his car, a green Dodge Challenger, very well known to Montgomery County police officers. They also tell us he doesn't have a license. They say Mayorga is known to taunt and even provoke officers running red lights, doing donuts, even speeding past them on major county roadways like this one, all in an effort to get them to chase him down. His online court records today, practically a mile long, dozens of previous traffic charges. Sergeant Kemp actually arrested this same driver a few months ago on this same road when police say he was going 136 in a 55 mile per hour zone. Back to today though, officers first noticed him going about 100 miles an hour. A few miles up the road near the Clarksburg outlets started weaving through lanes, getting on and off the highway. And after nearly running another car off the road, that's when officers decided to try and stop him. Sergeant Kep tried to throw down some stop sticks to deflate his tires. Mayorga swerved toward him and hit him. County leaders say it was the quick work of other officers on scene that saved Kep's life today. Fifth district officers were on the scene and provided life-saving efforts. We have been told that without those efforts by, uh, by members of the uh, emergency uh, medical teams that they don't believe that Sergeant Kep would have survived his injuries. If he doesn't have a license and he's doing this and he's got access to cars, there's nothing to prevent him from doing this again. He is an example of somebody who should not be put back on the street, period. Yeah, you just heard from Police Chief Marcus Jones and County Executive Mark Elrich very upset over the advance that transpired here along I-270 today. Police Chief Jones telling us Mayorga was arrested back up the road closer to Clarksburg where they initially first saw him. He was taken into custody without incident. Right now he's facing attempted first degree murder charges. Mark. Well, Randy, what's next for Mayorga and what more do we know about previous charges filed against him? Yeah, as for what's next, still a lot we don't know, but what we do know, the suspect Mayorga, 19 year old Frederick Mayorga, expected to appear in court here in Montgomery County tomorrow. They're also waiting on several tests to come back. That driver suspected of being impaired this morning. Some tests that they're still waiting on the results of will confirm or deny that again. Still a lot left to uncover here, and we'll be sure to bring you more as the story develops. Live in Gaithersburg, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Back to you. Randy, thanks so much. We'll switch in gears now. Live look at Roslyn here at 405. Looking good so far. Another day without an umbrella, Mark and Damon. And, and that's a good day. Meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us with the first look at the forecast. Damon, another good day for a walk during the lunch hour. Yeah, all in all, hey, no reason to complain. The weather conditions definitely were good throughout this Wednesday. But if there is one thing we'd like to get rid of if we could, this cloud cover, it just 
will not let go. Very pesky throughout the day. Many of our western counties out toward Winchester, Front Royal, Cumberland and Hagerstown have been overcast throughout the day, but you just saw that live shot looking back toward Roslyn, even over toward DC and the I-95 corridor. Those clouds filled right back in again this afternoon and did not allow for much sunshine, especially over the last few hours. And no question that cloud cover has had an impact on our temperatures, keeping things in the low to mid 60s. That's where we are at at this hour with those readings to the east. Meanwhile, to the west, where it's been overcast all day, we're talking about temperatures in the middle to upper 50s, and they have not budged over the last several hours. But all in all, hey, you might need that light jacket, but that is about it as we go into the evening time. Those temperatures in the 50s and 60s will slowly cool off, and there will be some breaks of clear sky, but there will still be plenty of clouds. But otherwise, with the clouds the only thing in play, it remains quiet, and you should be able to head out, do whatever you need to do this evening, and not have to worry too much about the weather. However, as we go toward the end of the week, looks like our next storm system is going to be knocking on the door. We'll let you know when you could see some rainfall coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Well, developing now a bold robbery at the wharf that was caught on camera. Yeah, our Leonard and Fleming is at the wharf right where four gunmen leaped out of a car Monday night. Leonard, they held up people in a very public area. Mark and Annalise said that they did. It was a very brazen attack that literally happened at a restaurant off to my right, Felipe Chow's restaurant, about 11 p.m. at night. And like you said, all caught on video. The video seen by DC News Now, but not yet released by police, shows an incredible encounter. Four men leaped out of a parked van and pulled guns on stunned people, all of whom said they just had dinner at Felipe Chow's restaurant at the wharf. The video shows one person cowering in paralyzing fear as she gets on the ground. The gunman took purses, phones, and other belongings before darting off into the night. Here is D.C. Police Captain Jeffrey Kopp on the robbery. I think it, we should all be concerned uh, for our safety when we go out, um, but I don't think it's um, in any specific neighborhood uh, more than another. But, uh, you know, just in general, uh, people observing their surroundings and uh, having a concern for their own safety goes a long way uh, when it comes to preventing some of these things from happening. Usually suspects arrive in a vehicle. There are usually multiple suspects. They are usually armed, uh, but our detectives are working very hard to try to piece those, uh, put the dots together to link any of those uh, crimes that may be um, linked. Police say they still have no suspects in this case, but they're working hard to try to solve it. Guys? And Leonard, does police think this is part of a ring of robberies, given that this happened in front of a very upscale restaurant? I asked that question, and they said they weren't sure if it was part of a ring or if it was random, but they've had a number of random robberies lately, a lot of hit and grabs. Uh, but this one here is, as the police captain said, is, is just very, very brazen, and they're trying to get to the bottom of it. Reporting from the wharf, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. All right, Leonard, this afternoon we've learned the man killed on Maryland Avenue in Northeast Monday was a former staffer for council member Brian Bri Nadeau. Now, he was identified as 28-year-old Devon Fuller. That shooting happened near a busy shopping complex around 145 Monday afternoon. Police are offering a reward for any information leading to an arrest and conviction. Meantime, Council Member Nadeau responding today in a statement. She says, quote, Devon grew up in Ward 1, was well-loved in our community, and worked incredibly hard in our office. He was proud and caring father of two young children. His murder is a tragic loss, and I sincerely hope there is justice for him. Continuing, I am sending my condolences to his family, friends, and the community he loved and that he loved that loved him back. Well, turning now to the conflict in the Middle East. Today, President Biden is making his long-awaited visit to Israel, meeting with leaders to discuss the ongoing war with Hamas. And he reemphasized the U.S.'s support for Israel while also clarifying his views on the people of Palestine. Take a listen. The vast majority of Palestinians are not Hamas. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. 
Hamas uses innocents, innocent families in Gaza as human shields, putting their command centers, their weapons, their communications tunnels in residential areas. Palestinian people are suffering greatly as well. Our Capitol Hill correspondent will have more on the president's visit coming up at 420. A Prince George's County principal is on administrative leave. The associate superintendent for high schools sent a letter to parents to notify them. Artosan Pekile is outside the school with the latest. A letter was sent to parents about that information. I have an email copy of that letter on my phone. The one thing that letter did not have was details surrounding why Dr. Gorman Brown, the principal of Charles Herbert Flowers High School, is on administrative leave. And as students and staff return to the building to start school today, that principal will not be in the building. And what we do know is Gorman was appointed principal of Flowers High School in 2012. According to the school district's website, under Gorman's leadership, a few years ago, the graduation rate of this high school improved to 91%. Now, even though the letter to parents didn't give details surrounding why Dr. Brown is on administrative leave, it gave some reassurance to parents that support for staff and students will continue. And Assistant Principal Deidre Screws will be administrator in charge until further notice. The letter also went on to say, quote, we want to assure you that the instructional framework for teaching, learning, and a safe and support supportive environment remains our number one commitment. It also said this will remain while Ms. Screws works diligently with students and staff to ensure a sound supportive environment for all. Now, DC News now reached out on Tuesday to the school district to get more information regarding why the principal is on administrative leave. Their response to us was the same letter they sent to parents. So of course we plan to continue to press the school district for more answers on what led to this decision. Now, we do want to point out that happening at the school high school behind me tonight is a town hall me meeting with the superintendent from 6 to 830. The superintendent has been holding several of these and one topic that has come up a lot during these town hall is safety at schools. Of course, we'll stay on top of this story and keep you updated as we learn more at Charles Herbert Flowers High School. I'm Tosin Fikile for DC News Now. Back to you.